name is Bashir Aminu. Um, I think I've already been introduced, so I'll just skip that and go straight to the point. So, um, how many of us have heard of blockchain technology? Yeah, can we just raise our hands? Okay, quite a lot of people. Um, it's not an easy um, technology to understand, and it's certainly not something I can explain to you in less than 15 minutes, but I'll just try to give you a premise of why um, blockchain technology is such a big deal and why we should actually start trying to implement some of the um, applications of blockchain technology in Africa. So before we talk about the potential of um, the technology itself, um, the topic is blockchain promise for Africa. So before we talk about the promise of the technology for Africa itself and why it could potentially change the way we do things and do business here, it's important for us to know why and where uh, why and when the technology was even um, created in the first place. So the year was um, 2008, and um, you know the world was just coming out of the global financial crisis, and um, you know which was caused in a large um, extent by banks in the U.S. And um, there was a feeling that we needed a better system, one in which you know the banks didn't have as much control as they did right then. So. It was then that, um, sorry, it was then that um, a person or a group of people under the name Satoshi Nakamoto wrote, um, wrote a, an eight-page white paper that introduced, that introduced us to Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. So, um, you know, it also spawned a massive libertarian movement where people were just tired of institutional manipulation by banks. You know, people had lost massive amounts of money from the global financial crisis, and people were just looking for an alternative to the system that we currently have on ground. So it spawned a massive libertarian movement that we are still seeing up till today. You know, like I explained, it was invented largely because people were tired of the current system. Then we could deduce that in areas where that are facing financial crisis or economic hardship, um, blockchain could potentially solve a lot of the problems in those areas. And uh, as we all know, Africa faces a lot of economic hardship, and you know, the institutions are pretty bad and are not you know, up to the standard of you know, the modern first world. So it is to this that I believe that the blockchain technology has more potential around Africa than anywhere else in the world. And I'll take you through why I actually believe in that. So, so before I continue, let's be clear. I'm not saying that blockchain is, is just going to come in and then solve all our problems. We have a lot of problems that need solving in Africa. And we need, but we need to start taking the steps to laying down the foundations to start solving these problems. One of the, 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 the basic principle of blockchain technology is transparency and decentralization. And looking at around Africa, that is something that is really, really lacking. We have a lot of dictators in government. You know, there's not, and the power of these um, um, leaders are largely centralized. The president controls basically everything else in the, in the whole country, and leadership is very much centralized. So what blockchain technology is trying to do here is kind of decentralize the way people do things around a community. And I, I believe that because of you know, the way leadership happens here right now. Blockchain could potentially change that. So one of the applications that I personally believe that blockchain could revolutionize is elections. So basically, if we use blockchain for elections in this country, trust me, there will, there will be no issues with rigging because it's totally transparent and decentralized. So there's no central authority like INEC, um, you know, having to, you know, control all the process of election, the results. The elections are open to everybody. Everybody knows who got what amount of votes. So if we, if we implement blockchain technology in our elections, it will potentially change a lot of things. Another application of blockchain technology that we could potentially look into, and companies like Flutterwave and um, Interswitch are already looking at this, is remittance. So I remember um, when my cousin sent me, I think, 60,000 Naira from the United Kingdom, it took about two weeks for it to get here. And I was in school then, I was hungry, looking for money, and I had to wait like two weeks 
for the money to get here. And I didn't even get my 60,000 Naira. They had already gotten 10% out of it already. So um, with blockchain technology, we can make that very fast, instantly. Sending money across borders is fast and instant. So elections and remittance are two of the applications of blockchain technology that we, that we can really, really look into. So Africa, um, blockchain and Africa share those key, key principles that I've talked about, which is transparency and decentralization. Basically, through colonization, Africa has been dictated to as to how we run our things. Uh, most of the current institutions that we use today are modeled out after European countries rather than Africa itself. So you see us using systems that have worked there that may not necessarily work here, but we use them anyway because, because of colonize, colonization and how things were set up. And these are actually systems that were built to exploit us. But we are still practicing those systems today. And in my opinion, um, those institutions have actually failed because they are not institutions that are built to suit our needs as Africans. And with blockchain technology, I, I believe that we can start um, leapfrogging you know, the rest of the world with technology. So I've talked about the applications of blockchain technology in business, in elections, in government, and all that stuff. So what I believe that we need to do right now is for the government to take the lead. You know, we have seen countries like Malta and Singapore doing amazing stuff. What we basically need the government to do is just to create an enabling environment for these applications to thrive, not try to block it. Um, I don't know if you know, someone, um, government would want to adopt blockchain technology for elections, for example. I mean, it's, it's, so, it's, it's basically a no-brainer for me. If the government truly really wants a transparent and you know, uh, manipulation-free elections to adopt blockchain technology, but the question is, is the government actually going to adopt this? Do the government actually want free and transparent elections? So that's one, that's one of the things that we need to look at. The government needs to take the lead and allow people to innovate, give a breathing room for innovators to start. So a lot needs to be done. And like I said, the government needs to create that enabling environment for people to start um, doing, doing stuff. Now let's look at who are people that are already innovating in this space. So we have the likes of Cora, which allows you to send money across borders instantly and without needing a third party like Western Union, for example, you can transfer value across borders very fast. And we have Sure Remit, which also does the same thing with remittance. And then we have Haven, which I actually work for. So Haven basically connects, digitizes African businesses and connects them to investors and traders from all around the world. So instead of having to wait for days and months just to get an investment from someone, you know, just Signing up on Haven, you can connect with investors and traders from all over the world. So let's be clear. I've talked about how banks and governments are not doing enough, but the goal here is not to replace the existing systems. You know, these systems are actually needed by a lot of people, but the goal is to improve on the current model that we currently have, asking um, the institutions that we have to do better and implement this technology to make their system faster and more reliable. So rounding off, I encourage everybody to, you know, like I said, blockchain is not something I can explain in 15 minutes and give you all the application. Explore the technology, look at the ways in which you can actually start plugging in and improving lives, because I believe personally that the number one problem that we have in Africa is poverty. So if I think um, you, you can just start looking at ways in which you can implement or work on this technology to better the lives of people around your environment. Thank you very much.